What else are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? All right, thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, prices have gone up. CNN clashes with a black conservative over Kamala Harris's VP pick and the economy. So in this video, we're gonna break it all down. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Mr. Sure Michael Singleton, a Republican strategist. Good man, by the way. I follow him on X, and I think you guys should too. Uh, also a black conservative, by the way. But anyways, he goes on CNN, and as usual, <laughs> conservatives always implement common sense into the conversation, and this is no different. Because if we don't have common sense in these discussions, we end up with people who are so far left that it's almost insanity at, at a certain point with their ideology, with their policies and their woke ideas about what is right and what is wrong and what we should be doing with the country. And the two main ideas in this video is about Kamala Harris's VP pick uh, and then the economy, which they are so out of touch on when it comes to the, what everyday Americans like you and me and what we are going through uh, because of the economy. So without further ado, let's play that video. All of the people that she's looking at are considered much better than her. These were people that were thinking about running. They would have run, except that they didn't want to go through this roadblock with her. And, you know, because you're the vice president. So they wanted to go pick them. And, and I think virtually every one of them is considered better, smarter, uh, would be a better president than her. Two things. Lord. Number, number one, just before getting to Trump, I, I do take issue with the notion that Josh Shapiro is disqualified because he's Jewish. That is not the case. Um, and I don't think that coming from the party uh, that supported the people who marched in Charlottesville, that we're going to talk about how Democrats are anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Number two, I think that after President Trump's disastrous rollout of J.D. Vance, I think that he's scared of whomever Kamala Harris puts on the ticket, because at the end of the day, whomever he puts on the ticket is going to take more oxygen out of the conversation about him, which is where he wants it to be, and put more conversation in the conversation around uh, Vice President Harris, where so, it's going to be helpful to us. I did, so I want, to rebut, I want to rebut this. I did a focus group with four focus groups with Jewish students about two months ago, and we talked about the state of the Democratic Party. Most of them were not conservative. Most of them were not Republicans, and they would disagree with you on how they view the Democratic Party based upon their experiences on college campuses. So respectfully, I would push back against that. Oh, that is such an amazing response. Someone who actually did their due diligence and backed up what they said with some type of study. That's what I always say about politics. Like these people, they go on here and they say their opinions, but they're not backing it up with anything. And this is their profession. This is their career, by the way. Uh, anyways, I have three points for you guys. Number one is the whole DEI identity politics conversation with the Democrats. I find it very funny that the thing that they campaign on, the thing that they are so happy about and that they celebrate DEI, that they're having a hard time just coming out and saying, uh, Josh Shapiro, who's the governor of Pennsylvania, who happens to be Jewish, is a great VP pick. The fact that it's even a conversation that him being Jewish is an issue speaks to the irony of the Democrat Party and how Kamala Harris is struggling to to pick him. And even if she wasn't struggling, what's taking them so long to announce that pick? Right. And and the media keeps feeding that idea that there's a good portion of people who are Democrats that don't support Josh Shapiro because he's a supporter of Israel. And if you haven't been t paying attention, there's been riots all around the country on university campuses because there's one side that does not support Israel and there's the other side that does. And the side that does not support Israel has been very violent and in some cases have set things on fire physically assaulted other students, et cetera, et cetera. So the irony is is real with the Democrat Party and what they're going through right now. And point number two is the swing state value of that VP pick, right? So uh, Josh Shapiro is in Pennsylvania, and the true way that President Trump will win this election is all he has to do is win one of those states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or Michigan. If he just wins one of those, it's pretty much over. OK, she's not going to have a chance whatsoever. But if he was to lose all three of those states, now we're talking about a totally different race because it's all about getting to the number 270 based on the Electoral College. 
And so some people think, well, because he's the governor of Pennsylvania, well, um, that will guarantee that she will be able to flip that state in their favor. Uh, but there's other people who say that's not necessarily true because there's going to be people who won't vote for him, who will not support this VP pick because of the fact that he's Jewish and he's a supporter of Israel. It's just idiotic even bringing this up. But this is what the Democrat Party who's running on identity politics, this is what they're dealing with. And then the third point, GOP is afraid of Kamala Harris. I keep telling people this and I've been seeing this on the Internet. The same Republican Party, right, that supported President Trump. The president who stepped foot in North Korea, the president who assassinated an Iranian general, that president. OK, got it. Got it. The president that went up against the Clintons, that went up against the Obamas, that guy. You're, you're telling me that he's scared of Kamala, but he wasn't scared of Hillary. Right. He, he's scared of Kamala, but he wasn't scared of Joe Biden. I mean, do, do you see it's like we're in high school, right? These people are so funny to me. And so as the Democrats go in circles about who Kamala Harris's VP pick will be, they have another problem on their hands, and that is the economy. And so what does that really mean in simple terms is that everyday Americans are feeling it. But hey, don't tell people on CNN that that is the truth. Let's take a look at this. I'm looking at other indicators such as the consumer price index. I'm looking at consumer confidence reports. And all of those things do suggest that the average American voter believes that the economy is not good for them. They do not believe that their incomes have superseded inflationary they, rates. I mean, and that they is have. The but let's, they have. For some. For no, some. no, overall. For, like, for they, some. They have. I'm going to push back on that. I, like, I think it's easy for people living in big <laughs> I East cover Coast this. This is my job. That, that is, my, I, I, under, I, I understand that it's your job. <laughs> But when you go and talk to regular people, they're going to tell you, when I go to the grocery store, it is more expensive for me to oh, pay for goods. Oh, that's true. That so is you true. you can't negate more. that I, fact with all due respect to your job. Okay. I, I'm just saying inflation has gone up. That is very painful. I do not discount mm -hmm. that. It's very salient. Groceries, gas, among other things, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But it's not true that, it, that household incomes are at a decade low. It's not true that the economy isn't growing or that we that turned off the argument. oil spigot or whatever else. I think you can recognize how people feel and also give them the real facts about how these economies are This is, this is a part of the on, issue. But, let's, with, let's, let's, but I think it is incredibly aloof to sit here at this table and pretend that what people are experiencing aren't real because some numbers on a chart showcases the data says otherwise. No, no, I agree. That, I that, that's agree absolutely with you. insane. I, no, I, I don't so think Michael, I actually agree. That, 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 that is absolutely it's insane. It's real. It's painful. And, 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 and I'm it not is absolutely suggesting otherwise. out of touch for people in big cities making great money telling everyday regular people that what you're experiencing doesn't mean a darn thing no, because my charts that, say that, otherwise. That's, that's not ludicrous. what I said. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? And and this speaks to. Um, a, a couple of things I want to bring up that has been happening that I've been following that I also have been feeling as well is that even though you look on a sheet of paper at what the numbers are saying, the numbers are saying, hey, the, the economy is doing great. Just because the numbers say that it doesn't mean that's the way people feel. When I served in the military, you had two types of commanders. You had a commander who was all about the numbers and then you had the commander who was all about the soldiers. And the commander that was all about the numbers was so out of touch with the culture and the morale and how soldiers really felt about the unit and the overall leadership. And why is that so important? Because it influences whether soldiers stick around or not. And then the second commander was someone who was all about the soldiers. And I'm not talking about someone who uh, was giving people a pass. He definitely held us accountable at the highest level. But you, you, could, you could tell that he actually cared. And what you see on these propaganda news channels, what you hear out of the mouth from the Biden administration is they're all about numbers. They're not about the everyday American. That's not the way that they speak. If you really pay attention to what comes out of their mouth, it's all about their legacy. It's all about their accomplishments. It's all about that, that the economy is doing great. It's, it's the best economy in history. And it's not about, hey, People out in uh, Minnesota, we see you. We see that you're struggling with X, Y, or Z. We understand that even though the inflation uh, is not that high anymore or the economy is doing great, we know it doesn't feel that way. They don't talk like that, right? They talk based on numbers and they sound like robots. And that's why there's a lot of Americans that I believe are going to rebel and not go along with this administration because the economy is the number one issue and Biden and Harris gets an F in that department.
And that brings me to the second thing, which is they're totally out of touch, right? When you're so focused on numbers and some of you guys probably experience this now, you might have a boss, you know, you, you might have a manager who's, who's this way, right? And they're all about the numbers and they're not about the people, right? You become out of touch. And this brings me to the final point, which is uncertainty. There is so much uncertainty. That's why there's a lot of people just waiting because people don't know what's going to happen in this election. And whether or not the interest rates are going to improve or come down. And so people just don't know anything right now. And that speaks again to how out of touch these people really are because they're not speaking to that, right? They're, they're not speaking to, hey, we know you guys are uncertain. We know you guys are struggling out there. That's not what they're doing. They're saying, no, well, according to the numbers and, and the chart, we are doing great. And this is what you hear out of Joe Biden's mouth. And this is what you hear out of uh, Kamala Harris's mouth. I mean, this is the way that they talk. And just for good measure, why don't we take a look at that? So when you talk about the economy, of course, it is by far the most important issue for voters. It's also true right now, Mr. President, that voters by a wide margin trust Trump more on the economy. They say that in polls. And part of the reason for that may be the numbers. And, and, and you're aware of many of these, of course. Uh, the cost of buying a home in the United States is double uh, what it was when you look at your monthly costs from before the pandemic. Real income, when you account for inflation, is actually down since you took office. Economic growth last week, far short of expectations. Consumer confidence, maybe no surprise, is near a two-year low. With less than six months to go to Election Day, are you worried that you're running out of time to turn that around? We've already turned it around. Look, look at the, the Michigan survey. For 65 percent of the American people think they're in good shape economically. They think the nation's not in good shape, but they're personally in good shape. The polling data has been wrong all along. You know, how, how many you guys do a poll at CNN? How many folks you have to call to get one response? The idea that we're in a, a situation where things are so bad, the folks that, I mean, We've created more jobs. We've made, we're in a situation where people have access to good paying jobs. And the last I saw, the combination of the inflation, the, the cost of inflation, all those things, that's really worrisome to people with good reason. That's why I'm working very hard to bring the cost of rentals down, to increase the number of homes that are available. Well, but let me say it this way. When I started this administration, People were saying there's going to be a collapse of the economy. Okay, yeah, we could cut that, make it short. Okay, so let me get this straight. The Michigan poll is right, but the rest of the polls are wrong. I mean, this is why he dropped out of the race, right? This guy, he, he has no idea what he's saying, and it's elder abuse. And I hate saying that because I can't believe as a country this is where we are, that they put someone like this in the White House. I mean, could they not find anybody better than this? I mean, at least have someone who is sharp, who can complete a sentence that doesn't look like they're about to fall asleep. I mean, come on, give me a break. And, and of course, he just he sounds weak. He sounds feeble. And it's that gaslighting that I keep bringing up in all of my videos is he's the, at the top of the list with doing that. Right. He keeps saying everything's good. Everything's great. But is it really, though? And of course, I mean, if you think his answer was crazy. Why don't you listen to what she had to say about this? What else are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? All right, thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, prices have gone up and families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. That's about having to stress and stretch limited resources. That's about a source of stress for families that is not only economic, but is on a daily level, something that is a heavy weight to carry. So it is something that we take very seriously, very seriously. And we know from the history of this issue in the United States that when you see these prices go up, it has a direct impact on the quality of life for all people in our country. So it's a big issue and we take it seriously. Good grief. I mean, how could someone say so much but not make any sense whatsoever? I, I, it's just fascinating how she's the vice president 
And this is why she was muzzled for a very long time. Remember, in the beginning of the administration, she was out there. She was talking. She was doing interviews. She was put in charge of the border. And then all of a sudden, she just disappeared. Why? Because they started to notice that every time she was asked a question, I mean, her answers were just out of this world. So you got one guy who can't even answer a question because he's so delusional. He's not even on this planet. His body is on the planet, but he's gone. He's done. And then his second in command, I mean, she doesn't know anything. And so no wonder this election is so entertaining because, I mean, this is what America has to offer. And when I say that, it's not really everyday Americans. It's the democratic machine that is based on propaganda. This is why we're here. This is why she's on the ticket. They're leading with her. They want to lead with identity politics. They do not want to lead with policy. If they wanted to lead with policy, they would have chosen a governor that is a Democrat that has a clean record, uh, a great track record, and they would have put him at the top of the ticket, but they didn't do that. They're running with her. And I liken this to basketball. You live by the three or you die by the three. So they're going to either win because of identity politics or they will lose because of identity politics. It remains to be seen come November. But as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you guys. Um, two things could be true at the same time, right? It is true that the stock market has experienced all-time highs and um, there's been a lot of growth. And it's also true that everyday Americans who are not following the stock market are struggling and that grocery prices are higher and gas prices are higher and the cost of living is higher and the cost of electricity is higher. That's true as well. And all I'm saying is... If the Democrats truly wanted to win in a landslide, they should probably switch up their messaging and start talking about that and start talking to the everyday Americans. But clearly, I don't think they can help themselves. I think they're still going to run with identity politics. They're going to make it about race. They're going to make it about gender. They're going to try to sweep their terrible policies under, under the rug, and they're going to use the propaganda fake news media to make it look clean and successful. But that's my mindset. What about you? What do you think about Mr. Sher Michael Singleton and how he went on there and he just dropped common sense? I mean, I just find it funny that they literally don't have any. And what do you think about President Biden and Vice President Harris' response to the economy and how they see it and how they've been speaking about it when asked about where we're at in the economy? Please leave your answers and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.